Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani, and we're going to take on a topic today in a rather paradoxical way, which is sort of the downside of healing from your narcissistic relationship. You're like, what? Bear with me, we'll get to it. And again, I'm always going to ask you, please, if you aren't already a subscriber, hit the bell and that you will get notifications about new content. And then also it'll remind you to go and look at the many other videos we've already been making on this topic. But let's talk about this, because some of you are thinking, Dr. Romney, the only thing I want to do is heal from this narcissistic relationship. And my single mission is that everyone heals from these relationships. So how could there possibly be a dark side to healing from narcissistic abuse? So think about it. Healing from a narcissistic relationship is a really, really difficult process. It takes time. It often takes therapy and support and hard work and leaving behind old demons and it's a lot of work and especially if it, it relates to family of origin issues it really does often require therapy or other kinds of supports but it's a lot so you're thinking I've healed this, this is exactly what I'm striving for how could that be difficult when you heal from narcissistic abuse something opens up in you perhaps the ideas of possibilities you had for yourself long before the relationship ever happened, or a new belief in yourself, or an ability to see yourself as enough, or a much healthier view of the world. It can really, really bring you into a new space where you're seeing the world clearly, and the world is seeing you clearly. It's as though you were looking through a dirty window, and now the dirty window is clean. You're like, oh, wow. There's this whole big bright world out there and I can see it clearly and I'm not putting up with poor relationships. I'm not putting up with bad treatment in my relationships like I'm good. So now you're more healed and you're healthy and you advocate for yourself. Well, here's where things can get tricky. Many, many people I've talked with have talked about this happening is that once you heal from a narcissistic relationship, you feel strong enough to talk to the narcissist again, which in the macro actually could be kind of good. Like, okay, why? I mean, I think that the, the, the less negative energy we carry through the world, the better it is for us. So you feel like, oh, I could let this person kind of back in and I can talk to them. We can do this. And so you do. Maybe you actually end no contact. Maybe you sort of loosen up on that gray rock and make it more multicolored rock and you open up that emotional part of yourself. Here's the tricky bit. There's a couple. Number one, the narcissist is a little bit like kryptonite. You're now in the sort of new state of being sort of Superman or Superwoman. But that narcissist, and in many ways it's due to something probably that we call classical conditioning, two things being paired up. When you're in the face of that narcissistic person again, although you're empowered in all other areas of your life, you may actually feel somewhat paralyzed again you may feel like you're cowering and just the association. Remember, the only thing that holds memory better than this thing is this thing. Our bodies often hold these memories and just being in the presence of that individual again can really trigger a lot of feelings in you and you then may start doubting yourself and you're healing again even though you are clearly healed. So some people will really report experiencing a setback when they're in front again from the narcissist, when they're in front of the narcissist again, that they had to do all that healing from. The other thing that actually sometimes happens and people are struck, they're so angry at themselves for falling for it, is that they do fall for the, they don't, they fall for it again. They believe the narcissist stuff and not because they're tricked, but because now that you're healed, you feel like, I got this, I got this figured out. And before you know it, you're getting pulled into the gaslighting and the manipulation and the confusion and all of it. And, you're th and then what happens is it'll often lead you to devalue yourself and feel stupid or foolish, which you're not. You're human. There's a reason this person was able to do a number on you once before, that they probably are still able to do a number on other people, and that they'd be able to do it again. And because of the shared history you have with this person, there is that vulnerability that's always present. A lot of people will say to me, 
as I was healing from the narcissistic person, I almost felt like I got cocky, putting myself back in there with them and thinking, I can do this. And then I left the whole interaction with that narcissistic person feeling worse than before. I kind of felt awful and I hated that feeling as though all my healing was for nothing. The thing that I want to reassure you is your healing wasn't for nothing. You have healed. But being in the presence of someone toxic, being in a toxic space, being in something that's not healthy is never going to feel good. If anything, this time you may actually feel how unhealthy it is right from the beginning. But because you're healed, you may think, well, I should be able to overpower this. I should be able to deal with this. Not necessarily. Even the first time around, especially if it was someone you chose or a relationship like that happened when you were an adult, you should have been able to feel like you could walk away, but you didn't then because you're vulnerable because they are charming. There is a lot to fall for there. If it's a family of origin issue, obviously it's a, more, a bit more complicated. You were a child when that, you met your parents and as you went through adulthood, it took all the effort in the world to set that boundary and yet when you're in front of them again, no matter how healed you are, you sort of fall for it. But the fact is, is that you healing is in fact you healing. And it's really about being judicious about whether you want to be in the presence of this again. In some cases, you might say, I don't have a choice, Dr. Romani. The fact is, this is a divorce. We're trying to co-parent. It's very complicated. I've done my healing. I still have to talk to this person. But then what I say is, you still have to keep it a little clenched. Don't fully exhale. Don't think it's going to go back to like, hey, I've got this figured out. Now they can't play me again. Just the negative emotional states that may start to overtake you may destabilize you and leave you feeling that maybe I didn't heal at all, which could set back your entire process of growth. The other thing that gets interesting is we can't count the narcissists out of this. Do you really think that they're happy that you've healed? I'm going to give you uh, uh, the answer. The answer is no. They're not happy you healed. You grew out of them. They experienced that as a betrayal and an abandonment. How dare you? How dare you think you can go through life without me? I'm your mother, I'm your partner, I'm your friend, I'm the one, I'm the one who's responsible for all your greatness. So they are not going to want you to heal. And if you actually have the audacity to heal, I can promise you they're not going to be happy about that. So when they sense you healing, trust me, they're going to try to draw you back into the mud. In the early phases of your healing, you would have had boundaries and no contact, and you would have likely had, hopefully, I hope, you would have hopefully had a cheering squad around you saying, don't go back in, stay no contact, do gray rock, keep those boundaries. You did that, and you fought the fight, and you healed. The narcissist isn't going to go quietly into the night. They are still going to say, oh, you think you healed? And they're almost going to view it as gamesmanship, because there's one thing a narcissist can't stand, and they can't stand the idea that they didn't win. And so they're going to need to win. And winning may even be little things like getting to you, saying just that one thing that only they know will get to you. It could be a parent that knows the one way they can stick it to you. It could be an ex-partner who knows exactly what to say to leave you feeling unsettled. If this happens to you, you feel like you've healed from your narcissistic relationship and you're faced with them again and you feel destabilized, I can only beseech you, don't think that you've lost ground on your healing. You have healed. That this is, was never a healthy relationship. This was always unhealthy. And as a result, you feeling uncomfortable being in their presence again doesn't mean you haven't healed. It means you're wise. It means your mind and your body are getting it. And it becomes an alarm signal to say, I need to step away because I don't want to put myself in harm's way. You've learned to advocate for yourself. Healing, like any process, leaves us in some ways a little bit vulnerable. Think about a bone you might have broken in two places. That bone may heal beautifully but that tiny little crack in vulnerability may always be there. And that's what I let people know. People say, will I ever heal 100%? To me, the ultimate goal of healing in a narcissistic relationship, frankly, is to get to a place of relative indifference. 
the indifference means that you're not as affected. Good, bad, it doesn't really matter. You just feel like, I don't care what happens to them. I really don't. You know it's bad karma to wish ill will on someone. It's like, I don't wish bad on them. I don't wish good on them. I just don't wish on them. And in the ultimate, ultimate nirvana, as it were, is that you just don't think about them anymore. I have worked with people who healed, who got to the place of indifference, and then 20 years later ran into that narcissist. And it was fine, but they'll say to me, Doc, you know what? After all those years, I still felt that discomfort. I still felt that tensing, and I, I heard that tiny, tiny echo of you may not be enough. But this time, like, I could barely hear it. But I didn't like the feeling. And in many cases, when they were lucky, they saw their former narcissist before their narcissist saw them. And they were able to turn around and get out of there. To me, that honestly is healing. A lot of people say, I should be able to face them. Meh, maybe. And in some cases, you may not have a choice. But the fact of the matter is, your healing is a beautiful, beautiful process. It's something you should hold on to. Feeling like you had a setback because you were in the presence of a narcissist doesn't mean you haven't healed. It means you have and that you need to listen to yourself and remind yourself that you never should spend more time with someone who's not good for you than you need to. Thanks again. Keep working towards that healing. That's the important goal. But don't let, don't let that moment of healing lead you to take your, lead, to put your guard down so that that narcissist can impede your healing, which they may very well want to manipulate your process of healing, or, or that you don't find yourself judging yourself and engaging in that negative self-talk again. I know you can do it. Thanks again. If you, if you are new to this channel, please hit the bell, subscribe, always get those notifications. We have new videos coming out twice a week. Thanks.